Hi, readers. Welcome to Books Connect Us from Penguin Random House. This is a podcast about staying connected with each other and the stories and authors who inspire us. On today's show, we have a conversation between Matthew Reamer and Leighton Brown, authors of We Are Everywhere, Protest, Power, and Pride in the History of Queer Liberation. This book is a rich and sweeping photographic history of the queer liberation movement from the creators and curators of the massively popular Instagram account at LGBT History and traces queer activism from its roots in late 19th century Europe, long before the pivotal Stonewall riots of 1969, to the gender warriors leading the charge today. The New York Times calls We Are Everywhere an impassioned photographic tour of an ever-changing, increasingly vocal, and insistently resilient LGBTQ community and culture, from 19th century ideology to contemporary conversations around intersectionality. And now, here are authors Matthew Reamer and Leighton Brown. Hi, this is Matthew Reamer. And this is Leighton Brown. We are homosexual life partners and co-authors of We Are Everywhere, protest power and pride in the history of queer liberation. Uh, Just here to talk a little bit about protest power and pride. Um, After the first gay pride marches in June 1970, activist Kiyoshi Kuramaya described the experience he'd had uh, with thousands of other queer people uh, marching from Greenwich Village uh, to Central Park. We came battle-scarred and angry to topple your racist, sexist, hateful society, he wrote. In one fell swoop, we came to destroy by our mere presence your labels and stereotypes with which you've oppressed us for centuries. And we came with love and open hearts to challenge your hate and secrecy. So now that we've reached June 2020, uh, we know that many queer people and uh, our allies of good conscience um, are questioning how or if uh, we're supposed to commemorate pride, these annual events that are so often marketed as completely feel-good affairs, um, so much so that one can hesitate right now to to even recognize them given the uh, pandemic uh, and unchecked racism, uh, police riots, and this rising tide of totalitarianism. what our work is about, what we want to emphasize, is these uh, struggles are what make Pride 2020 so important, even if the rainbows and the floats and everything never step off. Uh, Pride is a commemoration uh, of a struggle against police brutality, and it's much more than that. It's a, it's, it's a declaration of queer people's never-ending commitment uh, to fighting oppression everywhere. So because we remain battle-scarred and angry, more committed than ever to toppling racist, sexist, hateful society, uh, pride itself isn't canceled. It can't be canceled. And, and, you know, we have to reclaim pride and return it to its radical roots um, because it's undeniable that the queer community is made up of individuals that come from every age, race, tribe, gender, ethnicity, sexual orientation, ability, education, religion, class, background, location. Um, if we really truly want queer people to be free, uh, then we have to fight for everyone to be free. What we've always tried to do, first with our Instagram account, LGBT History, and then even more so with our book, We Are Everywhere, is to explore, analyze, and emphasize the overwhelming importance of militant, unapologetic radicals and their confrontational brands of activism throughout the ongoing struggle for queer liberation. More often than not, the bravest, the most impactful activists, those who created the space for the types of incremental change so many of us now take for granted, were those unable or unwilling to hide themselves and their truths. Gender warriors, queers of color, trans folks, women, queers with disabilities, under-respected, under-housed, and the list goes on. It was their visibility and their fight that pushed the boundaries. Queer history and queer liberation, therefore, can't be told in a vacuum. So many of our heroes, past, present, and future, lived and continue to live at the intersections of multiple oppressions. Thus, if if you want to celebrate Marsha P. Johnson, for example, because of her impact on what some call gay rights, then you necessarily have to support trans liberation, Black Lives Matter, 
the decriminalization of sex work, expanded access to mental health resources, greater housing opportunities, and the defunding of police. Otherwise, you're just using history for your own comfort, which is what oppressors do. Right, right, and I think that that's what with so this all started with at LGBT history, which been expanded upon uh, in the book, and really what the focus and the thesis uh, of We Are Everywhere is um, is that the radicals and the militants create this space that too often is then occupied by moderates who make commit or uh, compromises uh, with the oppressor. And part of what happens is uh, that that moderate bent becomes not only the way that our politics goes, but it's also the way that history is told. And uh, the, that by diminishing the radical voices and the telling of history, we diminish the possibility of of radical voices now, and and their importance and their value. Um, and I, I think it's important that we went into our our sort of uh, search for history of our community uh, out of a, a curiosity. We weren't looking to uncover um, what we are talking about now. We wanted to know the facts, and we continue to want to know more and more, uh, but what those facts taught us along the way is exactly that um, it, it wasn't the sort of mainstream history that is, to the extent any queer history is told, that, that people hear about um, as much as um, those who were or more on the sort of fringes of society, pushing the envelope, um, pushing those who were more moderate, more quote unquote acceptable to society at large, um, and and so it's striking to us that I mean, the facts have just led us to that. Uh, we did not search for those specific facts, right? And it's really about the 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 messaging and and the way that history is is told that that and and what we've always tried to do and certainly with with the book is that that um if you look at history if you if you want your i mean it's what you said about marcia um the further away we get from her death which was in 92 um the more and more we see her and for those uh, unfamiliar, Marsh P. Johnson was a trans woman, a black trans woman, um, who certainly was uh, involved with the collective events known as Stonewall. Um, her leading role is in question, even, I mean, by herself, she has said on record. She was not there at the very beginning. Um, she was a constant presence in Greenwich Village for decades. Uh, she was a kind of the soul, the positive energy of queer liberation. Um, she was under house. She lived with another activist for the last years of her live life. Um, she is a saint. Uh, she was treated like garbage by the mainstream movement, by, by and large, while she was alive. Um, she was murdered, though it's an open case. Um, but the further we get away from her death, the more she's embraced as this saint, this icon. Uh, and it's really easy when people are dead to do that. But in order to really fight for liberation, in order to really build a liberated future, we have to reckon fully with our past. And it does not diminish uh, Marsha P. Johnson to say that she was a sex worker or to say that she battled mental illness or to say that she was homeless or underhoused. In fact, it elevates her and it makes her a complete person to know that her struggle was multifaceted. And, and it also does not in any way take away from what Marcia did to not say she threw the first brick at Stonewall. Um, the, the myth that's, that's gone up around Stonewall has, has just created this, this undue importance 
on that singular event when people like Marcia spent the next 20 years, um, some more, uh, fighting day in, day out for, for the queer liberation struggle. Right, and I think that's what another big part of, of the book, and, and to get to the the images, and I, so the, We Are Everywhere is, I guess, kind of the, what we always said, the book we needed. Um, it is part photography, I mean, but, I, but I hate this description, but I'll, I'll use it anyway. It's 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 a photography book, and it's also a, a dense narr- history narrative, but those, those two things shouldn't be separate. They're not separate. It's one book. Uh, because we don't see photography as separate. It, 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 for a people whose fight has been about visibility, um, uh, photography are primary sources. And, and uh, being confronted by, you know, to see these people, to see Marsha P. Johnson, to see the radicals, to see uh, their kind of bigger than life presence um, is really important as opposed to just kind of reading the words that have been filtered down through academia. Um, and, we're, you know, Leighton Le- and I are both attorneys by training. We take a very fact-based approach. Um, and while that might sound obvious, it's not, uh, it, unfortunately. Now, with a lot, like, there, in, we, we build on incredible work by incredible academics and incredible po- uh, public historians. But the popular narrative of gay, and I use gay specifically as opposed to queer, um, history is very much love is love, very much fighting toward equality. When those who actually created this movement, equality was, you know, that was the least of what, equal to who? Is that really the best we could do? Uh, we wanted liberation, and, and a big part of that, and we talk about this uh, in the book, and it certainly Stonewall has to do with this, but it started before Stonewall, it continued after Stonewall, um, was about police brutality, uh, which both for queer people in queer spaces, um, and then of course for people of color, and then those many, many queer people of color um, is a constant struggle. Activists have for decades been yelling within the queer liberation movement to focus more and more on police brutality, only to be ignored. Um, right now, in the midst of uh, kind of a, a glorious reckoning with um, the undeniable hideousness of racism and police brutality in this country, it just it, it couldn't be clearer that if, if our community had focused more and listened more to the radical voices uh, about police brutality from Stonewall to Blues Bar and onward, um, we might not be as uh, troubled a, a, as we are. And it's, and it, but it's not too late. There are still radical voices, but it's time that we start telling our history um, and uh, in such a way to center the radical voices of the present. So Black Lives Matter would, <laughs> would, be, would be one. One, one of the most important things to take away. Um, yeah, because, I mean, it struck, we were talking about this, well, we've been talking about this, that, you know, I, I, so we are, we're also LGBT underscore history on, on Instagram, and, and we have this presence and brand. Um, and, and given the, the, this amazing activism that, that's, that's evolving after the, uh, hideousness, uh, right? I mean, the vile, the evil uh, of Maude Arbery and George Floyd and Breonna Taylor um, and so many others, so, so, so many others, and um, Tony McDade, um, that there's this, there's, among a lot of queer people, particularly white queer people, that we need to, we need to not focus on pride this June. We need to focus on fighting oppression. We need to focus on black lives. It is, you know, as historians and activists, we are struck that there's such a disconnect from queer history that somehow they don't understand that that's what pride is. Pride is a battle against oppression. Pride is about black lives matter. 
uh, and that it, un, until all of us are free, none of us are free, and that every year there is this debate about is it a pro, is it a party or is it a protest? And every year those shouting about it being a protest are laughed off and called crazy. Um, and you know, I'm not one to say oh there's silver lining, but maybe they'll start to listen. Um, the, yeah, right. Pride and the the current uh, protests going on um, and just mass numbers and and it's so wonderful to see uh, they're not mutually exclusive and and in fact overlap a lot and um, for people like us white cis guys um, who really have always had it pretty easy with a cop um it it's a time that because it is also a month when the world pays more attention to our community we should seize that attention and redirect it and and really focus on the overlaps within our own community uh, you don't you can celebrate pride your community's pride your own pride uh, without just focusing on rainbows and and the party and the parade and yourself right exactly I, I, I want to redirect I want my my pride to go out and to help others um, right not well, I mean especially I do always think of young queers too Um I'm old enough, and with that comes a certain stubbornness or confidence or something um, that I can deal with the world better. And as I said, it's not not necessarily a tough world for a, a white gay guy in a East Coast city. But the you know we we can't leave anybody who doesn't have those same privileges and benefits behind, right? And yeah, I, I think that what we what we have realized over the past five years or so, uh, since kind of discovering and starting to live with history, um, we are more complete human beings. Uh, certainly, more confident and complete queer people uh, uh, than we otherwise would have been. And that the connection between confidence, representation, and the ability to be in the struggle, however you can, it, it's not just on the street, it, however you can. Um, but Audre Lorde said everything we do has to contribute to the struggle because everything they do is grinding us to dust and we will not be ground. Uh, that, that if we can, it's not, you can't walk around without history. We all have to have some basis in history. And, and there's so little information. And, and there's these lies that we don't have enough facts. There's lies that, 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 that we don't have photos, that we don't have primary sources. That is the oppressor, both within and from outside our community, saying that, no, don't look, don't look. I'm going to tell you what, what you want, what you should know. Don't buy that. And, and what we have been struck by is what we just didn't know. And, and as soon as we started asking, what don't we know, the, set, the other question is, why don't we know it? And what we've tried to do with the book um, is just show a, an inkling. I mean, just show a, a little bit and, and it opens up a whole new world from, um, from the late 18th century. And there's really this, this line, that's what we, I mean, that's one of the most, I think, powerful things about the book is, is that I don't. I hesitate to say a straight line because, uh, you know, but a but a but a pretty direct line from activist to activist, uh, issue to issue, that these same people keep popping up. These same things keep popping up, and they pa It's a torch that gets passed down. Right uh, now, and while there is so much out there, I think it's important to remember at the same time that. I mean, compared to the more mainstream history, whether you're talking about the history of the United States, whatever, it has been so analyzed um, again and again by so many people that, I mean, queer history is 
still being discovered and learned um, now. I mean, there's been amazing work for for decades and more now in that respect, but um, we don't we haven't had the same sort of army of uh, historians and everybody else working on it, and so I I think everybody should always be a little suspect when they hear the first the most um you know know, crediting entire events or or movements or anything else to a single person or organization um well and i think i mean i think that that is something that we can learn that we all can kind of learn right now if, if you're if you're if you're in the struggle at all right now focusing on the events of right now things move so quickly and 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 events happen so fast i mean so we were i mean we live in in dc and uh the you know what happened on what the june on june 1st at, at lafayette square when uh, our current president decided to do a photo op and uh, a, a, a huge um, presence of uh, what cops and soldiers gang and, uh, gang right <laughs> opened fire uh, you know not not fatal fire thankfully into peaceful protesters I mean it 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 happened in an instant and and um, there are so many people that have so many stories to tell no one person can tell the story of that event um, and I can't help but think of of Stonewall like in, in that I mean it was an absolute riot a, a cop riot it was an ap- it was absolute chaos and and as we watch all this stuff unfold this should give some sense of what you should how you should approach history anytime anybody tells you the definitive history close the book it's not the definitive history and like Leighton said yes there there are ton there's incredible work and we can't touch some of that work and we don't want to make it sound like I mean some of the work we're not blazing trails um but a lot of the most popular work out there, and that continues to be published, uh, is told from a very respectable point of view that still aims towards showing gays, lesbians, bisexuals, transgender people as just like everybody else. And when you tell your history that way, you're going to find examples in history to show that. So you're not looking for the people who simply didn't want to or couldn't have possibly been just like everybody else, and you don't you don't teach uh, younger people, younger queer people, that we're not like everybody else, and that might be the best thing about us. And well, I don't think it's might. That is the best thing about us. And and Frank Kameny, uh Larry Kramer, who just just passed, Marsha P. Johnson, Sylvia Rivera, Audre Lord, uh, the list goes on. I mean, these are all people that that figure prominently in in the book. Uh, don't let those names be used to further the uh, goals of fitting in. Um, it, they, they believed that we are right and, and there are moral obligations and, and that, that obli- those obligations all build up to um, oppression anywhere is a threat to oppression everywhere. And, and um, yeah, we, we have... A, an obligation to continuously learn, and with that, I, you know, as Layton has said, we are cis white guys. You should read uh, those who have influenced us the most. Certainly, Audre Lorde, uh, Pat Parker, Essex Hemphill, James Baldwin, James Baldwin, oh, James Baldwin, uh, Joseph Beam, uh, Charlene Crothers, Saeed Jones. Um, God, I, there's there's more. I went looking up at our our bookshelf. Um, it, I think the, the the mention of that we are different, um, and, and that's what gives us us power and and makes the community so wonderful. But it, it's I guess a few things. It, one that is also what can make it tough, especially younger in life to embrace yourself and to feel that pride and yes i use capital pride there as well um i think it all stems from that um 
it also gives us the power now while Matthew and I just can't fully or perhaps even begin to comprehend um, what the black community has to deal with from you know, far too young an age through their entire lives when they're dealing with with the police, with employers, I mean, the list goes on and on. Um, it allows us to have some some amount of greater understanding and and connection, and and we need to pursue that and, and use the privileges that we then have um, in order to fight for the less represented in our community and outside of our community. Right. Well, I just, I think that it's that we can't, you don't get to just have trippingly off your tongue, say the LGBT community or the queer community, unless you're doing the work. Uh, if you are a gay man uh, of privilege, you don't get to have that community that includes the most marginalized people. Um, you don't get to put that cloak on unless you are actively working to understand, you're never gonna understand, but actively working to not speak on their behalf, but to listen and amplify and create space um, for the, the more marginalized. Those who have created space for you and you've now, you're now living in their space, we have to continue to create more space. Um, and part of that, and I think what's going on right now and what I think hope that we are everywhere shows is that 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 includes screwing up um, that includes uh, uh, a lot of infighting there's been a lot of infighting within the queer community and there always will be and that's really important because we're not all the same um, and 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 people misspeak people make mistakes and they get told that you made mistakes and instead of taking your ball and going home uh, listen to the people that you've tried to speak on behalf of. Um, take your lumps, learn, have your consciousness be raised, and then fight harder. Um, because right now, t June 2020, the only option we have is to win. Um, the, the other is, is destruction. Um, and, and you know, we are very proud of our, of our book and our, our work. Uh, it is built on uh, the shoulders and of countless people, um, and and if whether it's in the dedication page, or in the acknowledgments, and certainly in uh, the 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 end notes, um, there is so much to read. There's so much incredible work out there, in particular uh, by uh, Black queer people and queer people of color generally. Um, the, our book, our work should should, if anything, be the very beginning because you know this is a ceaseless fight and that's what pride is all about it is a it is a state of being not a celebration right our our work for a number of years now I mean, before uh, the the book was even a thought really um, it, it has transformed us it has just absolutely empowered us um, I knew at a very early age I was gay, but it wasn't until the last few years that I really started feeling part of a community, and I would say had true pride in, while maybe I did in certain aspects of my life, not necessarily in the just the simple fact of being gay, and and I the history and including the the imagery um, I, I'm probably the more sort of visual of the two of us and so it from early on the photographs just they captured me just like they are capturing me now seeing everything that's going on across this country and and also capturing the country as a whole really um it it just it instilled this just greater understanding um and and confidence and and pride and and we hope that the work we do, history generally, the work other people do in the area, um, does that for, you know, it, it, hopefully everyone in the community, um, as many as possible, um, 
young and old, um, you know, cis, trans, everybody, um, we're all part of this history and, and should be proud of, of what the community's accomplished while at the same time aware of how much more we have to do, uh, no matter how comfortable you may be uh, in your individual experience at this point. Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, to all, you know, the queer folks, uh, especially younger queer folks, but to all queer folks, like, and those that are out there on the streets right now, uh, we are so proud of you and and the the mil- your militant ancestors are so proud of you uh, and and you are part of a long history uh, of radical warriors that have all too slowly but not by their doing but by the oppressors doing inched us toward something that looks like liberation do not give up uh, we, it, it, just keep going and to everybody who is out there just thank you uh, black lives matter thank you for listening to books connect us for more great book recommendations and information about your favorite authors feel free to follow penguin random house on social media or visit penguinrandomhouse.com and if you've enjoyed what you've heard go ahead and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts as it helps more listeners to find our show. This podcast is produced by Pat Stango and edited by Clayton Gumbert. I've been Aaron Leaf, and until next time, this has been Books Connect Us.